Hello. Um, as you can tell, I'm actually quite um, have a quite bad cold, and I might cough in between. Um, but in between, maybe one of you will offer me a strepsil. I won't say I will say no, <laughs> because um, according to experts, two weeks ago in the news, um, you either have strepsils or you talk um, if you want to give a powerful talk. So I'm going to just talk. So bear with me if I cough. Um, clicker, yeah. So I have my hot water and everything, so hopefully all will be fine. So two weeks ago, I was in a launch party in London, and there are a lot of companies over there um, attending. Um, you have Dropbox, you have Slack, and a lot of other small uh, enterprises and um, startups as well. As you would do you, in this kind of event, you would ask each other, oh, we, where, which company you work for, and what do you do? And I said, I run a consultancy called Bayer Global, and we help clients understanding their users around the world, home country, and um, other markets, and I help them to best localize and design for these markets. I typically get two type of um, responses. One is, oh, oh, yeah, you should talk to our expansion team. And then the other typical responses which I will get, not just in this event, but normally in other, other occasions as well, is that, oh, interesting, we just get into the German market or China market. Um, but all we did is just translation, translating to the local um, language. And it's surprisingly, uh, or rather unsurprisingly, this is unfortunately most of the companies think when they think about localizations. Um, I have only 30 minutes with you guys today, and I only have one mission. And this mission is to tell you stories and hopefully give you a new perspective on why relying um, only on um, translation is not going to be sufficient, sufficient for you to um, go into a new market and be successful. Because after all, localization is not just translation. If you want to grow your international market, you need to do more than that. So let's talk about language translations in the, um, first, since everyone's thinking that, oh, that's all I need to do for, um, to localize. But even within that, you could actually, there were mistakes being made as well. So for example, a lot of companies I worked with in the past will say, okay, um, we can translate this chunk of information or content, but we have to wait until um, next year to translate the other part because of budget limitations or limited um, CMS constraint. So let's do that first. But this is a big no-no because if you only translate part of your um, content, it's going to do more damage than good because more cognitive um, effort is needed for your users to switch languages. And most importantly, it will give them the impression that um, you just don't care about us. You couldn't even bother to translate everything for us. So translate it all or sometimes you wait and when it's time and then you, you have ready to translate everything, then do that. An online travel agent that I used to work with, um, they have a big market in Asia and they came to us saying, um, we have translated all our content um, for, into Malay for our Malaysian users and we spent millions of dollars on that. But for some reason, we didn't see any uh, increase of profits or sales and they were wondering why. In countries such as Malaysia, um, there are many um, ethnic groups. Um, the majority of population is Malay and then followed by Chinese and India. And each of them speak their own languages, for example, Malay language, Mandarin, Tamil, and a lot of other languages, dialects as well. But what this company doesn't know is that English is widely spoken in this country. And a lot of companies actually conduct their transactions in English and sometimes in official co correspondence as well. So Malaysian online users are really used to use English um, um, when they go to a website or visit a website. So don't rush into a translating something um, to a local language when you get into a new market, because sometimes research like that will help you to save some money. Steven Pinker, a psychologist and cognitive scientist, he believes that language and thoughts are two different things. Language is a tool to express what the thought is. So, um, for example, um, 
that is what that's why actually um, people who don't have um, a language can still think. And also words can be interpreted and translated in the different um, scenarios or different cases. One of the projects we did with a car manufacturer, um, technical specifications for German users are about the gear power or the horse um, power of the engine. But actually for British users, we found that it's all about seats. So when you're designing for your, uh, the content to your users, local users, you probably want to find a good translators who actually will translate not just direct translations, but also based on the context. You need to give all this relevant information to them and small things like that can bring you a um, big impact. So we talk about sub-language um, to need to be localized, but actually there are a lot of other things, for example, content, um, features or functionalities or visual designs that you might need to um, localize as well. And sometimes even bigger, bigger things, such as your business model or business strategies. I recently worked with a Japanese company, which is one of the most popular and successful uh, online marketing marketplaces in Japan. So they came to the UK um, early this year, but within six months, they knew that they have to do something. They need to make a change, they need a pivot. Because the, brand, the, because the business strategies that they have, which brought them uh, millions and millions of dollars of sales in Japan, doesn't work in the UK market. And this is similar to the conversation I have with someone last week, um, a Chinese company, which um, create 3D interactive modeling. They were successful in China, but now they want to come to the UK. But they have this impression, say, we are not going to change our um, product strategy or offerings or business model at all. So I talked to their sales team and they say they were struggling to find sales at all for the last few months, even though they, no matter how hard they work. Because the model and the offerings they have just doesn't work in the UK um, environment. So the stories I'm going to share with you today is um, about how why these things have been localized for you to be successful in the market. So we know that these are the things that you need to localize, but how do we know why and what and how to localize this information? And these are all down to one word. Can you guess what word is missing there? Culture, thank you. So culture, we hear this have been using in different forms in like China, the Chinese culture is so different. We have to design based on their culture differences. But culture itself is such a big word. What is culture, by the way? And how do we define it? Do we define it by regions? For example, African culture versus China, uh, Asian culture? Or do we define it by countries? And this is the most common way companies um, localize based on countries because they see countries and market. But how, why, how, but how does it work with people like me who um, was born and brought up in Malaysia, but my family actually followed the Chinese customs and live in the UK for 14 years? Where do I, which culture do I belong to? And my needs, my motivations, my mentality actually doesn't belong to one country anymore. Or is it based on language? Mother tongues perhaps? or ethnic groups. But why is ethnic groups? Is that race or um, skin colors? So that's why to me, I don't think that there's a way or there's a need to define what culture is, but actually to look into what culture consists of. This is a, one of the most um, common models that we, we, can, we know of, um, which is called cultural dimensions um, by Hosteder, if I pronounce it correctly. Um, and it is a very insight, um, useful insight, but to me, it's too generalized. Um, and as well, it's not very practical when it comes to um, how to implementing that, all th these elements he talked about into design. For example, um, German is a masculinity society, where Sweden is a, a feminine, feminine society. So what now? How do we design based on that information? It, went, it then actually down to the designers to interpret that. And that is very dangerous and risky because it will become very subjective and it might be misinterpreted or mistranslated. Um, 
So therefore, this model is very good insight and reference. But to me, we need to look into it more granularly. So let's look at culture. But culture itself, you can talk about business culture or organizational culture and so on and so on. But here today, I'm going to talk about anthropological um, aspect on that. If we pu pull out the key um, words for this, you have beliefs, values, custom, behaviors, and also interactions between one another or with their environment or with the world. So all this to me sounds like it's actions. So it's someone or something or society actually react and respond to. So if culture is some sort of actions, it seems to me there's an external um, influencers that are actually going to influence how a society evolve or shape or think or behave. So let's see, this is a society, no matter how big or how small it is or how it was formed, um, it is society is a community that brings everyone together. And these are the things that I believe is influencers of what, um, how a society being shaped. So it could be gene or traditions and custom, or could be a legal system where a legal settings of a country could actually um, influence how people in that country, uh, how much trust they have in putting their information online. So these are the factors that's going to influence how and what and why and um, which things are you going to localize. But how do you learn about the ecosystem so that you can actually know what to localize? User research is one of the key secrets. A few years ago, I was doing a research in Qatar um, for a luxury hotel brand. And we went there, we wanted to know how people book their hotels, um, luxury hotels online. So we knew we need to talk to business people and also leisure travelers. In one of the sessions, two guys come in and we're just like, why there are two people? Did he bring his own maid? But actually it turned out this guy is his personal assistant. And this is how they book hotels online together. He will sit at the back, look at it. If he has something to say, he will, he will lean up and point it. And that's exactly how they do it. Actually, it's very popular in, in, um, in that region. So this is something we will never encounter or anticipate it um, if we haven't come go to the, um, the, the country to do that research. So we went back to the design team and everything. So we were trying to think about how we actually can design a website providing this kind of um, functionalities or features so that we can cater these scenarios. I work with a big uh, international hotel chain um, for many years, or eight to nine years, as their global UX experts. And at the time, they have 19 brands um, in total, from cheap brands to lux luxury brands. And a few years ago, they decided to, instead of focus, um, trying to understand high-level um, understanding of their users around the world in different regions, they decided to just focus on one market to know about them very, very well before they move on to the other market. So we started off with China because that was one of their key market at the time. So what we did is we went in, we do some user research, and then we came up with a list of hypotheses. And then we create a high fidelity prototype based on those hypotheses, and then we test it again. And the output of that enabled us to identify six unique things about China, um, their China uh, uh, customers, um, which is very different from their US customers, which they know very well. So with that, that enabled them to, them to know what to localize, as well as use that as a key reference to define their roadmap for the Chinese market. And then after that, we brought that to Spanish speaking market, which including Spanish, uh, Spain and South America. And we use this time, we use the prototype they, um, we created from China and see how much tweak we, can, we need to make and how much they can share between the two markets. And what we found that some features we have to move it, remove it, and some features we have to add in. For example, in South America, um, package holiday is more common than in China. So we add that in, in um, as one of the key features. And as well, dark colors works very well in China market because 
and that company, that hotel chain company, have a more luxurious brands in those markets. But it was too over the top for um, South American or Sp Spain customers because most of their brands in those countries are more lower tier brands. So they need to turn, tone down the, the design, the visual language. So this is one of the examples how research would be able you to know what to localize in terms of design, in terms of content, features, and strategies, as well as brand pro propositions. Bosch um, wanted to went into India and create a product just for them. And they did a market research. And the market research tell them that, oh, you need to create a washing machine that kill germs and bacteria like no other washing machines do. And to validate that, they went to, go to, China, uh, to India to do some ecosystem research. So what they did is they, they found out that actually they observed people and talked to them. And what they found is that actually people don't care about germs and bacteria unless they have infants or babies at home. In fact, they think that it's better for them to actually have exposure to all these germs and bacteria to create a stronger um, immune system. They actually found another key um, interesting um, things about this market. So in India, like, any, like a lot of Asian markets, uh, Asian countries, it's very common for grandparents to live with parents and the, grand the children and child, uh, grandchildren the children and grandchildren. And as well, because India is very hot and humid, that means they have to do their laundry every single day. So it's very, probably it's different from what we do here, like twice or once a week. And the women who actually do the laundry, they have to go to work as well. So what they did is in the morning, they do the laundry and then they will put the clothes out um, to dry under the sun. And then in the evening, they take it back and the next morning, they repeat the same cycles. So what does this mean? This means that if the washing machine, if the, mo the washing machine they use has to have shorter um, cycle, washing program cycle, so they can finish off the, uh, the washing quicker to dry outside before they go to work. So this is how um, research in the, on, on the site will be enable you to find out these kind of products or propositions you have, as well as your USP in that market. <coughs> so sometimes um, user is talking to users, um, it's not just, it's not enough because you need to look at the whole overall ecosystem. For example, you might look at the mobile speeds or their internet speeds. So for example, infrastructures and technology um, will define how much information you want to put uh, pre or present it to your users in different countries. For example, in South Korea and, not, um, in, and Norway, it is okay for you to present information very heavy visual designed content. Um, but that might be a bit different when you go to Indonesia and India because it would take ages for them to load the information. So you might want to um, trip, um, strip down a few information or use less um, visual content. <clears throat> and, when you, you, and when you decide um, websites for a mobile or a mobile apps, um, you have to remember that the devices that it's going to be used for to access your content or information might not just be Samsung or HTC or Nokia um, or Blackberry anymore because there are a lot of other local um, phones that, um, or devices that will be used. For example, in Asia will be HTC, Xiaomi or Lenovo um, and all these different brands. And don't forget, uh, don't forget about the clone and copy version. version. So when you design apps or device uh, or mobile websites, you need to remember that um, your products might not be might, might be accessed on devices that you might probably won't you probably won't see um, at all or won't get on your hand. And sometimes it's useful to study social norms of a country as well um, of or a society if you getting into the new market. For example, if you want to study social norms in, um, in China, you probably need to know this guy called Confucius. Confucius. And he's a Chinese philosopher who was dead um, 2.5 million thousand years ago. Millions, that would be too long. Um, 
And his, his, his teaching um, not only influenced Chinese market, China people, but also Japan and Taiwan, as well as um, countries which has a big Chinese community like Malaysia and Singapore. His teachings emphasizes uh, collectivism. So individualism is negatively viewed in um, collectivist society. You, so there's a saying in Japan, um, which the nails, the nails which stick out needs to be hammered down. So you don't want to be too different from other people and you want to be part of the community. And European American culture emphasizes um, individual um, independence, whereas collectivist society actually very much emphasize our interdependence as well the very sensitive with social context. So cultural neuroscientists actually did a significant number of research trying to identify how these two different cult, um, societies think. They actually uh, found that different cultures do not see the world differently, they think differently. So even if they look at the one same thing, they might be thinking about different things. This is exactly what we found when we did a year research with um, British uh, Medical Journal years ago. When we show publications to our European participants, the question they have is, um, what, what is the citations and what are the other publications that related to that? When we show this, the same publications to Japanese um, participants, the questions they have is, who else have looked at these um, publications? And what do my peers think of, of that? So it's very important to provide the relevant content to a different market when you go into um, a new market, because small details like that will, will have a big impact. I'm gonna skip that, actually. Um, in late 1970s, Dyson actually came up with a new design um, where he actually have used two cyclones to separate air and um, dirt. And so that is removing the need of having fiddly bags. And so very good products. But the thing is at that time, none of the US and European um, manufacturers were interested. Only one com company willing to uh, meet Dyson's um, term. And that was Apex in Japan. But they have one condition. They want to uh, promote these products called G-Force, G and they need to be in the color of Hello Kitty pink and Barbie purple. And it was a big hit because all the Japanese housewives went crazy. And actually, they, they, they brought um, their sales. The sales, actually, each item cost almost 2,000 pounds in British equivalent. And after that, these products have been manufactured here in the UK and other parts of the world with the color that we are familiar with. I think it's gray and orange. So why did the G-Force version is such a hit in Japan? That's because they have this culture about being cute. And in Japan, they call it kawaii. They have, um, they have a airline, but this is more Taiwan, um, Taiwan airline. It's, Everything they, they based on Hello Kitty theme. When I say everything, I do mean everything. See how happy these guys. <laughs> and they do have other things like masks, in the just masks. They make it very cute and fashionable. And also cute emoticons that you can buy when you're using MoMA instant messaging apps. For example, Kakao Talk and Line, which is quite similar to um, WhatsApp, but actually more advanced. So people in Japan and South Korea um, went crazy with all this. They spent um, $18 million each year just to download these stickers to send to their friends and to show their emotions. Yeah, $18 million just for these stickers. I'm not a big fan of um, fast food, but I have to say McDonald's actually um, is a very good example of how they look like, they know the market very well before they go into a new market. So the research they've done not only informed their marketing strategies, but also the menu. For example, these are the products that are menu that you, you can find only in specific markets. Should we have a guess quickly? I know I have only four minutes. Mac falafel. What do you think it will be? Cheshire Allah. 
sorry, Middle East, Egypt, and prawns burger. Sorry? No. Quite far. Asia, somewhere in Asia, in Japan. Um, they call Abby, um, Abby Filet. Congee. I know sometimes you, a lot of you might find it's quite disgusting. <laughs> um, congee is from Malaysia. Um, Macfala, um, Arabia, which is quite, com like you know, from Arabia. And where else you can get beer? Come on, you know this. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Um, they, their research actually not just localize their menu, but actually they they um, they understand it more than that. For example, they know to to survive in the brutal Indian government, they have to use local forces. For example, they have to use local um, chefs or cooks or, or waitresses, and as well, they have to provide more workforce for the agriculture um, um, team as well. So this is for them to show that they not only a uh, customers um, friendly company but also employee co um, friendly company i want to do an exercise now um, because what i talk about earlier seems like it's all big business strategy and all those things but actually it sometimes it can come to very small details what well, if you have pen and pencil um, imagine you are a designer or maybe you are designers already you need to design an um, a logo icon to represent um, dining in Asia, but you have to use um, the bowl and chopstick. I'll give you 30 seconds. Just draw something, how you would design it. Ready? Any of you draw something like that? Yeah? So, the one of these design, so it's just very simple, right? It's very chopsing, and what can you go wrong? But one of these design actually is a design um, created by a designer for one of my clients before, and but little did did they know that actually having a chopstick in the bowl when you're standing up is actually offering rice or food for the dead people, and so that they found it quite offensive and quite upsetting. So small things like that um, is actually going to have a big influence um, in when you get into a new market. So before I finish off, I want to show something share something relevant to you. So I'm pretty sure that when you, sh um, you probably hear of this or you probably say that yourself as well, that, um, oh, this country is um, behind this, the other country and they are catching up and things like that. And it sounds very familiar, um, similar to human revolution, isn't it? Something like that, where we all start with um, apes with big jaw and then we end up with a modern man. But the thing is, real evolution is not like that. This is real evolution because no one is advanced. Chimpanzee is living alongside with human and spider monkey. They all exist together. And we all start with from one space and evolve differently based on uh, the environment. And some might survive and grow very well, and some might just die out and um, extinct. So it's the environment that uh, influences how a creature evolves. It's the same for countries. No one is behind anyone, and we evolve differently. We have a, our culture evolve differently, our habit evolve differently, and our behavior evolve differently. That is why our expectations and needs um, of a products and services evolve differently too. It's the same for mobile phone, for example. Um, it's it's not how we we evolve to be like San Francisco, for example, the modern man. To say someone in India is trying to evolve to become um, someone in San Francisco in terms of how they use mobile phone, that's utterly rubbish. Because we don't want and we can't um, say that everyone of, of us want to evolve like to be a hipster in San Francisco in the 10 to 20 years. So you can say people around the world is adopting but they are definitely not trying to evolve to become one of us or become the modern man in America or San Francisco. So what we need to do is to understand the niche. My friend's Will, he studies water birds in cold weather. He, does, he studies puffins in, in the cold weather like in Scotland. He doesn't just study puffins, but he, he studies puffins um, habitat and 
their nests and their biology because he can't understand puffins without, um, without he can't understand puffins without studying all this. So it's the same for you. You can't say you design a good product and experience for your, client, uh, for your users around the world without understanding their needs, their behaviors, and their ecosystem. So my, the key missions of my consultant is, consultancy is to provide good quality experience for, for the users around the world to ensure parity of experience. Because we believe that your German users or Russian users or um, Chinese users deserve to have the same good experience as your UK users have. And now it's our job to, understanding, to understand what, the, what is the definition of good experience for all these people. So if you think allocating small budget into translating your copy will, will give you a good success in different countries, I hope this talk is going to change your perspective on this. Because getting into a new market doesn't have to be scary or spend million pounds or dollars. To do it right, you not only have to study your users, but also you have to look into the whole ecosystem. So if you don't want to die out and become one of the extinct species, you need to find your niche and understand your users and understand your ecosystem so you can survive. Good luck with that and thank you.